Welcome back, everybody. A key tax package for businesses is being prepared to come to the floor as soon as next week, but there are plenty of hurdles that are starting to pop up. Emily Wilkins joins us right now from Washington. Uh, what are you seeing, Emily? Hey, Becky. Well, yeah, this major tax package, this is the one with benefits for businesses as well as a tax credit for those with kids. And it, yeah, it could get a House vote as soon as next week, but it is facing increasing opposition from really all quarters of Congress. I mean, we've got concerns ranging from progressives who believe that the child tax credit needs to provide more funding, help more kids. You've got hardline Republicans who are concerned that the bill could allow undocumented immigrants with kids born in the U.S. to get the tax break. And you also have a lot of members from New York and New Jersey who want to see the end to that cap uh, for state and local deductions. Plus, Senate Republicans that I've spoken with in the past week have also raised concerns about provisions on work requirements for the child tax credit and if the $78 billion package is going to be fully paid for. Rohit Kumar, a tax expert with PwC, said tweaks to the bill could be difficult, especially if the House does wind up voting on and passing the bill with strong bipartisan support. I think the appetite for further changes is going to be pretty limited. That's not to say that people won't try to change it, but I'm skeptical that they'll be successful in changing it, especially given how divided the House is and how partisan the environment is over there. If Speaker Johnson does decide to go to a vote next week, he's likely going to have to be using a process, a procedural move that's going to require two thirds of all lawmakers, Democrats and Republicans, to support the bill for it to pass. Now, that, of course, might seem tough in a divided Congress, but there was some hope for the bill last week when a key tax panel approved the bill 40 to 3, with many members who had expressed concerns to me about the legislation ultimately backing it. Jason Smith, the chair of the Ways and Means Committee, noted the bill not only focused on bipartisan tax provisions, but also needs to move soon so businesses can get the tax benefits when filing for 2023. Businesses are struggling. Um, that's what we heard at the field hearings as we traveled across the country. The inflation crisis has definitely affected them. The spike in interest rates has affected them. House Speaker Mike Johnson is going to need to decide today if the bill will get a vote next week. And guys, we know that he's been having conversations with members uh, trying to figure out what the path forward here is. It's certainly something there's a lot of pressure on the business community for Congress to get done, but they got to figure out if they have the votes. Emily, if, if it doesn't get passed, what happens to that child tax credit that went up so significantly during COVID? So that really doesn't come back at all. I mean, even if this does get passed, what this bill would basically do is put us in between where we were in COVID and where. No, if, if it doesn't get passed, it, it, does any of the sunset? Mm. I mean, that was I, I thought I read that somewhere, but I could be completely wrong. If there is no action. No, it's what, you're. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're right. I mean, a lot of these provisions, they were put in place with that bipartisan tax law way back in 2017. They expired in recent years. And so Congress is saying, hey, let's try and bring some of these back. We know they were important for businesses. And of course, if it doesn't get done now, they've got another bite of the apple coming up in 2025 when most uh, tax provisions in that larger law sunset and Congress will need to decide whether or not to re-up them. Of course, I asked Jason Smith, why not just wait till next year? And he said that a lot of these businesses need the help right now and that they can't wait.